today's tutorial, we're going to start a new series of videos on creating a simple water shader. The first thing I like to do when starting to create a new shader is to go out and collect reference. It's important to take a look at what the thing you're trying to create actually looks like. Once you have a good set of reference images and video, take a look and identify the key properties that make up the essence of what that thing is. And those are the things you're going to try to imitate in the shader. It's also important to identify some things in the reference that you're going to leave out. Nature is infinitely complex and it's impossible to do everything. So make sure to decide what you're not going to do. So here we're looking at some reference images and video of some mountain streams. I took these on a backpacking trip a few years ago. The first thing that I noticed from this reference is that the water has some amazing surface ripple patterns. It swirls around and has a very chaotic looking surface. I also noticed that the water appears to change color as it gets deeper. The shallow water is almost completely transparent, but the deeper the water gets, the more opaque it gets and the more color that I see. I can see that the water is reflecting the environment. The interesting thing about the reflections is that you don't see them as well when you're looking straight down into the water. When you look straight down, you see through the surface down to the bottom, but when you look horizontally across the water, the reflections are brighter. And finally, when you're looking through the water, the waves and ripples on the surface create some really interesting distortion patterns. The water is refracting the light and causing the rocks and other things on the bottom to distort. So there are a lot of other elements here that we could create. The foam created in the rapids, the way the current runs faster in the middle and slower on the edges, and the way the water swirls around the rocks. But these are things that we're going to choose to leave out for now. Okay, so we've got our core set of water properties. In today's video, we're going to focus on the surface ripples. Next week, we'll go over creating the depth opacity and the depth color. And then finally, in two weeks, we'll take a look at reflection and refraction. So let's jump into Unreal and start building some ripples. All right, so here we are in Unreal. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is to go and find a really nice water normal map to use for your shader. And for the purposes of this tutorial, all I did is uh, go to Google image search and do a search for water normal map. And you can see that there are tons of results here. And I think this is the one I ended up picking. You're going to want to choose one that has a lot of detail. There is a water normal map that ships with Unreal as part of the, the uh, default content. But the thing that I don't like about this one is that it doesn't have a whole lot of details. So if I if I show you this, you can see that um, the scale of it is kind of small, so there are only a few ripples in the texture. And the problem with that is that you end up noticing the tiling artifacts a little bit more. The one that I chose uh, looks like this, and you can see that there are a lot more ripples in here, so I have to tile it less, uh, and that makes the tiling artifacts uh, a little bit less. Okay, so let's jump into our shader here. And to begin with, uh, we're just gonna connect our normal right up to the normal socket and see what we get. And already you can see that we get something that looks pretty good. It's, it's, it's starting to look like the ripples of water, which is exactly what we want. But we need to make the ripples move. One of the nice things about Unreal is that it comes with a lot of pre-built nodes to do the, same, the kinds of things that you want to do. Um, so we're going to look for a node called Panner. And what this node does is it scrolls textures. So I'm just going to connect the Panner node to the UV socket of my texture sample. And then I need to give it a speed. So I'm going to drag this out and do a search for constant. And for now, I'm just gonna give it a speed of one so we can see what it does. Uh, 
All right, so you can see that it's scrolling our texture coordinates and our water is now moving. However, there's a couple of problems with this. For one, it's moving way too fast. And for two, when we were looking at the reference, the movement of the water in the reference images was really chaotic, and this is really uniform. So let's go about solving both of those problems. I'm just gonna disconnect this now so that our water stops scrolling. And uh, we need to do a couple of things. First, we're gonna project the water. So right now, by default, this coordinate that's coming into the panner is using the UVs of my mesh. And instead of using UVs, I want to use uh, world position. That way I can project the water onto the water planes in world space and I can use multiple planes and the, the water effect will tile across the planes. So I'm gonna do a search for position and I'm gonna use this world position node. Now I'm gonna project it in the Z axis, which is the down axis. And so I need to do another, uh, I need to do a component mask. And I'm just gonna use the red and the green, which is the X and the Y of the component mask. And I'm gonna pass that into the coordinate of the panner node. So that will get the correct uh, projection for my, my coordinates. Now the other thing that I need to do is control the size. Um, so I'm going to add a multiply here. And this value will scale the effect. So I'm going to add another constant. And I'm going to give this a value of 0 0.0035. So right now you can see that I've got results here, but they're just way too small. Um, but if I multiply my world space coordinates by 0 0.0035 uh, and then connect that up, we'll get something that's a little bit more reasonable. Okay, and I disconnected my speed, so we need to add this back in. So I'm just gonna connect my speed here and then clean up my graph a little bit. And you can see now that because we're projecting in world space, uh, speed of one, whereas when I was using UVs, uh, it was too slow, but now because it's world space, uh, it's, I'm sorry, it was too fast before and now it's too slow. So I'm gonna set this value to um, actually, yeah, let's set this value to 17.5. And let's see what we get from that. Should get something that's a little bit more useful. Now the other thing that I wanna point out is that we're scrolling diagonally. And that's because this value is being applied equally on the U and the V, or on both the X and the Y coordinates. So what I wanna use instead of a constant float value here is I want to use a constant vec2. So let's do a constant two vector and plug that in. And on the U, I'm going to want to do 17.5, but on the V, I'm going to want to do uh, 8.5. Now this is going to scroll it not, not exactly diagonally anymore, but it'll be, it'll scroll more on one axis than the other. Now notice that it's not perfectly axis aligned. It's, it's scrolling a little bit uh, in both dimensions, a little bit more in X than in Y, um, but that's kind of what I'm going for. All right, so let's clean up the graph. And the next thing that I want to do is duplicate this. I want these nodes to be nice and clean so that when I duplicate it, uh, everything will be uh, nice and organized. So the reason that I'm duplicating this is I can create some chaos in the ripples if I sample my normal map multiple times where each time is scrolling a different direction. You might, not, uh, you might remember that from 
the video that I did, uh, episode number four, where we did the distortion shader. I sampled the distortion texture a couple of times and scrolled it across itself. And that's the same thing that I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna copy all of these nodes and paste them. And I'm gonna give different scrolling speeds and scale values. So let's start out by, I'm just gonna change this scale value a little bit instead of 0 0.0035, I'm just gonna make 0 0.003. And then for the speed here, I'm gonna use 0 0.25, so just a tiny bit in the x-axis. And then I'm gonna use negative 15. So this one's gonna be scrolling the opposite direction in the, the, the y-axis. All right, now I'm gonna pass the same uh, absolute world position into the coordinate for this panner as I did for the other one. And now I need to combine my normal maps together. So I'm gonna move these over just a little bit. And there are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm gonna do it kind of a cheap way. I'm gonna use an append node here. And I'm just gonna take the red and the green and I'm gonna do that for both of these. So I don't care about the blue channel for now. I'm just gonna ignore that and just take the red and the green. And then I'm gonna add these together. Now you can't do this if you have the blue channel. Um, the blue channel cannot be added. Um, but if you just take the red and the green channel, then you can add them together. And then for one last node here, I'm gonna add a multiply and I'm gonna add a constant. And this constant is going to control the strength of the normal map. So like if I plug this in right now with a constant of zero, uh, we'll get nothing at all. Um, that's gonna be a, a perfectly flat normal. But what I wanna do here is uh, set this value to one. And then finally, instead of using this blue channel here, I'm going to add a node called derive and I'm gonna plug my X and Y into that and what this does is it will take the X and Y that I've generated here from this normal map and this normal map and it'll calculate the Z and it'll give me the result of X Y and Z so that I can plug that into my normal all right, so now we have our two normal maps and they're scrolling in different directions and they have slightly different scales and different speeds and we end up with something that looks pretty cool. It's starting to look like water. Now remember, in this week's tutorial, we're not covering reflection, refraction, opacity and those kinds of things. We're just going over the ripples. So there are two more things that I want to do with the ripples and then we'll call it good. I'm going to copy these nodes uh, one more time. And this set of uh, normal map sampling nodes is going to do something kind of interesting. You'll notice that I have the two here that are almost exactly the same speed. Well, I'm going to make this one a lot larger. And what it's going to do is create a pattern that's really big that represents like these really large slow moving waves across the surface and it's going to break up any tiling that I might see from the fact that these two are almost the same size. So I'm going to take this constant node and replace it with a constant vec2 and I'm just going to give it some really small numbers which will make uh, the projection really large. So I'm going to give it 0 0.0001 and 0 0.0004. And then for speed values, I'm going to give it 2.15 and 2.8. Now it's really important for me to point out that when you are doing this, uh, the speed and scale values that you end up with may be really different from what I get. The important thing is to spend some time and 
tweak these values so that you get something that looks like the reference that you collected. All right, I'm going to add a multiply over here to control the intensity of this normal. And I need to give it a constant of 1. And then I can take this normal here, or rather the x and y, and this normal here, the x and y, and then plug that back into my derived normal z function node. And now I have normals that I have these two that are kind of the small normals, and then this one that's uh, a much larger normal. All right, I'm going to clean up this grid just a little bit. And now we have one last feature that we can add. Remember when we did the ripples for the rain effect? Well, if it's raining on our water, we can take the same function that we created for the rain ripples and add them here to our water. So in this case, I'm going to grab the weather ripples function that we created previously. And I'm going to add another world position node. And I'm going to multiply this by a size or by a constant value. And I'm going to give this a value of, let's say, 0 0.005. And I'm going to use that for the UVs. And then for the intensity of my ripples, I'm just going to give it a constant value of 1. And now I can take these ripples and I can blend them with my other ripples. So the water surface ripples are all added together here. And then I'm combining them with my raindrop ripples here using this node called blend angle correct normals. And then I'm going to pass that. Actually, I need to reverse this. I need to put my blend angle correct normals over here. I'm going to make this my base normal, and I'm going to make my rain ripple normal my additional normal, and then I'm going to pass that into my normal socket. So I only want this if I know I'm going to get raindrops on my water. Um, that's just kind of a little bit of an icing on the cake, uh, but you can see here now that I've got my water ripples, and I've got some nice uh, raindrops hitting the surface as well. All right, so that's our tutorial for this week. Be sure to come back next week when, when we're going to take a look at uh, depth opacity and depth color for our water. And then the following week when we'll talk about reflection and refraction. I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial. Uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this.